please subscribe, like, and share. Hello, today we have a different format behind me. I'm hiding in one of my bedrooms in the house because it's scorching hot at the shop. <laughs> so, we will start our talkies from here on, or our video. Well, good morning, good day, good evening, from whatever part of the world you're tuning in from. Thank you. Uh, it's nice to have you guys watching me, and uh, let's move today. And our subject matter is, uh, I want to give a little insight into uh, running an NA car as opposed to a nitrous car. And uh, I'll just show some of the differences. And while on the way, I'm shooting some pit and racetrack videos, and then I will break off into segments and try to explain what we're going to see next. And I think it's quite revealing uh, so that when any of you are deciding either to go NA, nitrous, turbo, blown, in fact for here we're running uh, Brad Udell's car, which we call USA1, Udell, Sniff, and Alameda. That's our little partnership that we got going on this car. And of course, Dan Degada, I've been racing with him for many, many years, and he's won a bunch of races. And uh, the USA team uh, recently won out here, so uh, we're on a good start. Anyway, um, it, well, since these cars compete, uh, I can only say so much in what goes in them. But I'm, I'm going to give general generalities, okay, and... Um, I think uh, it's still worthwhile, it's still given insight. You want to start with an NA type of race car or engine, and that's the kind of racing you want to do. Um, it takes quite a bit more, okay? Uh, sh should I say in, in short, NA, building NA race cars, the engine's harder, that's no doubt. Building boosted cars or nitrous cars, boosted being blower or turbo or nitrous, the engine's a little on the simpler side, but running it is a lot harder. Okay, so building an NA engine is harder, running a boosted nitrous car is harder. Okay, so those are what I can generalize from this video. If you want to build an NA car, once you're done at the shop, and this is your, your best effort, if you're down on power, you go to the racetrack, it's not going to see anything more. <laughs> what you had in the shop is what you're going to have at the racetrack. That's it, because you're working with the atmosphere. There's no kind of aspiration. You can seal your hood, whatever, it'll probably give you a tent if that. And you can do all these refinements. You can only work so much on the ignition table, the fuel table, the intake. What you have is what you have. From that point on, you're not going to get a half a second or a second by finding something new. What you had in the shop is what you're going to have at the racetrack. Boosted nitrous, you can crank up the boost. You can put more nitrous jets. You can at least salvage a combination that's not ideal. Okay, and uh, I tell you what, most uh, most of these cars will run, no doubt. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is that, and an NA build is very hard to do. I found that out when I left Nitrous back in the 90s, and I decided to go NA, and no regrets. I learned a lot more, and then running with uh, a bunch of guys running boosted, blown. Anyway, I worked on. You know, of course, Brad Udell is the subject matter here in Don Degada. And uh, Brian Henley with his blown big block Maverick Chevy, of course. And Scott Wiley's big block Chevy Toyota. Both cars are turbo. And so we, I get a pretty good lineup. And there are others out there. And uh, some have gone and ran and basically moved out of state or whatever but there are people out there that uh, like I said some of these or a lot of these videos are from the experience I've had running with these guys for many many years so I kind of figured it's a pretty good collection of experiences so uh, a lot of my 
my uh, advice here or experiences I try to highlight here basically give it to you guys because sure you know we can all have a gift you're a good painter you know you're a good singer that's all an excellent excellent uh, achievement but what's even better when you're you're given a God well you have a God-given talent for something that you could basically pass it on to the other generations so maybe they can learn also as well so we expand our, our knowledge in essence make a better world and uh, if this is where it's taken me um, I will gladly give this knowledge to everybody here uh, because one day you'll probably be racing battery cars <laughs> no noise all you're gonna hear is tire noise and gear whine from the transmission and we're in. What a boring future for the next generation. There's nothing better than the noise. You know, when you go watch a top fuel funny car, pro stock, all those are great. But to get the full impact of the internal combustion engine, you gotta watch funny car and uh, uh, top fuel basically once they take off you're hooked that's why a lot of these people they don't even know who's racing on the lane they're just listening for the noise <laughs> It's like that has been said many, many times. Oh, guys, the hardcore race uh, NASCAR guys, sure, they know the drivers, but some of these fans, they're just waiting for the big crash. They don't care. They don't even know who the driver is. They're just waiting for the big 15-car uh, uh, pileup. <laughs> Imagine when you're running electric cars. They're just going, shh, shh, shh. No, no, and then bam. <laughs> no fire, no kaboom, nothing. Oh, maybe an electrical fire. Oh. And you can call the fire department, take a while to, to shut that sucker off. So the race probably be delayed. <laughs> probably take several hours to shut an electrical fire. <laughs> oh my God. What a future. But anyway, guys, here we go. Uh, watch on and I'll break it down into uh, different sections and we'll go from there. Okay. seen in that uh, two cars Brad Udell's uh, hatchback and uh, Dan Degada's 66 or first generation Mustang uh, NA versus Boost or Nitrous uh, like I said there uh, the running a boosted car is a lot tougher because you have a small tire in this particular car here we have eight and a half by 26 um, or 235 uh, slicks or radials or basically uh, race tires and it's hard to try to get traction with that much power right now not like NA you, you build up the RPM nitrous oxide or blown 
you know, centrifugal or whichever uh, GMC type, the, the power is just about instantaneous. And same thing with nitrous, they come in hard. Turbo, a little bit forgiving. Okay, so anyway, this setup here, we're talking about how we set it up basically, or really look more at the spark plug and how we read them. A little bit different. What's important to point out here is that you notice both cars took off very hard. And I will talk about how we read those spark plugs between these two engines. A little bit different. Okay, and I'm not going to get to the particulars about what to look for in a spark, but I'm just going to give, like I said, general, general generalities as far as what we're looking at. Okay, how the spark plug is trying to colorize or show its color, which is, well, uh, I see some guys run auto lights and they read the auto lights or the champions or whatever, spark plugs. Uh, maybe they're speaking a different language. I couldn't get any kind of uh, good read on any of those other brands. I'm not saying uh, other people are doing it wrong. It's just that they probably speak a different language. <laughs> I couldn't read it. The NGKs, well, that's what I recommend. It's fully readable. In fact, I did, and I said that other videos before, I did a, a magazine test with uh, somebody's race car. And uh, when we tested it first, they showed up with, uh, I think there were auto lights. Yeah, auto lights. And they said that the reading was great. It looked good. But uh, when I switched them over to NGK, it showed that they had a lean, lean, very lean condition. And when they changed the fuel pump, that's when it started showing some color. When we switched over to NGKs, you know, it showed very, very, like it came out of the box. So uh, once we changed the fuel pump, as like I said, they have issues with fuel delivery, uh, then it started showing very, very lean. Whereas on the other spark plug brand, brand, brands, uh, it showed it's, you know, burning pretty good. So it could be deceiving. Like I said, but if some of these people read it that way, I guess it's it's uh, basically like black science, okay? Uh, it probably, there's a lot of mystery to it. So I'm able to read the plugs, and somebody might read it a little bit more, better than I could. Well, uh, it's a given. But the bottom line is, whatever works for you, keep doing it. Until somebody showed you otherwise, then just think about it. Okay? But here on is another example on what not to read the plug when this happens. Or this. The video shows what actually happens when you have a big giant wheel stand and you shut off, the engine goes full rich. Your plug reading is not going to be accurate. Remember, when you have a five second pass or a four second pass, or even a six second pass, when it goes full rich, it takes a while to clear that plug out and give you the proper reading. Now, when you look at the NA car, when it took off, it just spun. Okay, so Brad came off of it, and when it does that, <laughs> basically what's going to happen is it goes full rich too, and then you come back in, and when you really want to do an accurate plug reading, especially on a nitrous car, that run is aborted, you put another set of plugs, because if you try to read the, the same thing after it's been run, it's hard to see the coloration accurately. Same thing with the NA car. You know, uh, but it's a little bit more forgiving on the NA car. A nitrous car, once it's got co spark plugs colored, it's going to be tough to try to lay another uh, combustion coloring on it. Uh, more likely, you're not going to be successful in it. Then you're not going to see an accurate reading on what actually happened, or if you really leaned out this time or rearranged it down. You have no way of knowing. So when they shut down like that or spin and then they get back on, and then you try to read it after the run, you're wasting your time.
if you guys notice on this part is that uh, we're towing the car to the starting line or from the finish line and the reason for that is and I like to impress this or press this point further because I know a lot of people in the in Asia and they run a lot of motorcycle racing and they make a pass and then they motor back to the starting line back to their pits you let me repeat you cannot get um, an accurate air and fuel reading of your spark plugs there's no way in the world you can do that because like I was stated in my previous videos when you make a pass you get to the finish line you cut it clean now when you cut it clean and kind of like ro runs on a little bit or backfires consider that uh, plug reading null and void you can't get an accurate reading because it'll just coat it and show full rich as well driving back to the pits um, you gotta avoid that either you get some kind of uh, uh, pull a pull the bike whatever bike that is pull it back to the pits and uh, I'm dealing with the same thing with uh, a friend of mine who's trying to run for the championship in the jet ski uh, competition series here on the west coast and he goes all over the United States and I, I told him when you do a, a plug check you go full throttle, right? He goes, yep. And then uh, what do you do? Uh, do you shut off completely? No, I, I'm I idle back to the the you know, pits right at the side of the you know lake or whatever river they're racing. I go, well, that's uh, it's not gonna show you an accurate reading. And uh, I said, D does anybody have a jet ski that towed the racing jet ski back to the pits? He goes, no, they don't. I go, well. There you go. You'll see a whole different world when you cut off clean and do that. Uh, there's no ways around that. That's the way it should be done. And uh, I just hope that, uh, uh, like I said, I keep telling people in Asia, you got to cut clean and then tow the bike back or get to the finish. Like what I used to do back then in, in the 80s, I make a pass like in Orange County. I get to the the end there, I pull over to the side on the return road. I have one spark plug, I take off number one or whichever is accessible. I pull that out, put it on the side, put my other spare spark plug in there and I drive back. It's best to see all eight, but at least it's better than nothing at all. All right, and, uh, and uh, please, uh, you know, do that uh, so that you're, you're not gonna be, uh, getting all confused and everything, okay? part of this video where it showed the front spark plug and the one on the rear the coloring looks perfect and that's what I told uh, Brad that the tune is looking pretty doggone good and uh, the coloring is just right that's exactly what I'm looking for and the two center ones are somewhat rich now that is caused not because that uh, we have uneven banks of uh, flow on the cylinder head but the truth of the matter is once Brad gets on the trans brake a little bit longer than necessary and it happens the per perfect conditions are 
you know, the light comes down, you're on the trans brake, really, really short, and then you, off you go. Because what happens there, it goes full rich, then suddenly the two center, okay, the two center spark plugs, even on that V8, the two uh, right beside the carburetor will go full rich. And to do an eighth mile run, it's not enough time to really colorize it correctly. Because when this, you come off the trans brake, the engine is massively full rich and it covers up the whole spark plug. And then by the time the rear cylinder, which is not getting doused by this accelerator pop fuel, flooding the plenum, they have a tendency to, to lean out on the, the ends, even though it's altogether rich. But the center cylinders get the full blast of fuel. This said, uh, this picture illustrates that. And then on a second run, which is showing the passenger side, you notice more even all across the board because Brad again got a little bit quicker on the trans brake, but left. Okay, so it didn't really go full rich for a long time. So uh, take note of this. Plug number four. Number four. Is all the set for this weekend. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's eight.
after Meg Ramsey jumped the starting line and that four-door Nova is going to be racing in the limited 235 final against the number one qualifier, Dan Degata. On this video, you probably notice on the spark plug how much combustion residue is uh, evident on the first and second threads of the spark plugs. And uh, that is a quick way of determining your heat range. And if it's too far in, two, more, or two or more threads, or three or more threads, should I say, is exposed, it's too much into the combustion chamber, it's going to run hot. If it's like one thread as opposed to combustion chamber residue all around, then you'll probably be right there on a nitrous combination 
granted that you got the correct heat range. And I tell you, uh, somebody I saw before keeps tuning his stuff and it keeps melting everything. And he just couldn't get it right. He said, is it right on the, the timing? Is right there on the fuel? But his sparkling was too hot for the nitrous that he was running. It's shooting quite a bit. And uh, so let's throw caution on that as well as trying to read the spark plugs. When it's too cold, it's going to show rich or rich like coloring or characteristics when you try to read the plug. So again, make sure before you start your timing, fuel adjustments, make sure you have one to two thread engagement with combustion residue. That pretty much puts you in the ballpark. Everything else there is either you go one step or one up, hot or cold. It's important that you do that. It is rather simple, but you got to remember the basics or else you'll be out there uh, chasing your shade <laughs> or chasing your tail trying to get the right tune and, and you can never get it right. You can never get it right on point. Again, indexing the spark plugs, we do that on any application, especially when you have a big dome right there. Uh, we do index and um, not quite as necessary on nitrous because with nitrous oxide inside that combustion chamber, it's such a nice, um, what do you say, say that, uh, uh, burn enhancer that just a tiny bit of spark, it'll go. That is just the benefit of nitrous oxide, and it's really, really effective uh, burn enhancer. And you could, uh, well, in fact, to the point where it wants to speed up. The more nitrous you, you put in, the faster the flame becomes. All right, so that's when uh, you're trying to get it to, to uh, control the flame front. And uh, having a dome is a friend, and I'll, I'll uh, um, explain that. For nitrous, having a dome in the engine is a plus. It's a net, well, basically uh, negative for NA applications. Uh, dome is a friend for nitrous engines. Well, turbo, supercharge, different ball game there again. So uh, we got to know the difference in how we approach these things. And that's where the V groove comes into play. Um, Softening the chamber comes into play. I will do this on the uh, next or future video and I'll try to uh, show what is actually going on here so that we can probably uh, be more informed and make the necessary uh, adjustments or necessary changes in our builds and uh, save us quite a bunch of money. Model heater. Weight of the nitrous of the nitrous bottles. Well, that was a quick look into the components of uh, Dan's car and uh, it's a far far kind of nitrous uh, that I used to run back in the day <laughs> in the early 90s in fact yeah I left about 92 got out of nitrous altogether but at the onset when nitrous first came about there were 10,000 rpm Marvin Miller all those guys and uh, Dale Vaznajan and Mike Thermos, who both uh, owned NOS then, was sponsoring me pretty good at that time. Uh, and I was running for them and giving them a lot of feedback, like many others out here on the West Coast. And I found out early back at that time that duration was key. 
you know, lots of duration, really basically overcoming the engine for the amount of compression we're running. That wasn't very much, but that kind of softened up the, the hit coming out of the gate. And later on, I kind of realized that when you reaching up the, the, light, the fuel side, you can dampen this hit as much as, uh, you know, as long as you don't flood the engine, so you can jack up the fuel pressure a bit. And that kind of has a tendency to, uh, to soften the hit off the line. But uh, one of the main things that I ended up doing was that uh, we had a plate system, at th that time non-adjustable too. And I would vary the length of the solenoid. I'll take it away from the, the well, from the plate itself. Because when one of them, like they're underneath the carburetor, right beside the, the spacer plate. And when you hit the nitrous, you know, it's a short distance. So you have this big, wah, big hit out of the gate. I kind of figured when I was moving the solenoid farther out away from the plate, uh, it doesn't have that instantaneous lean condition. Because remember, that's under a lot of pressure. Even though the fuel is at six and a half, seven pounds, and the other one, <laughs> a lot more than that, on the opposite end, there's an almost instantaneous lean condition which makes the car jump. And I was moving the solenoid farther away, six inches, eight inches, from, you know, especially when the systems got bigger and bigger, uh, I, I would move it away from the plate itself, and that kind of dampened the uh, the nitrous hit. So that was, and when I started putting one plate on top of each other, every time I go first gear, you know, I took off with the the solenoid farther away. Um, when I hit second gear or right after, really, right past the sixty foot, you can engage the second, and sometimes. Uh, what happens is that you blow the tires. So again, you know, we don't have the controllers that they have today. I moved the secondary plate, okay, uh, my second second stage. Again, the solenoid is farther out as well, and I vary it in, uh, how much hit it gets. Uh, you know, I, I mean, because everything is much better today. The, the slicks or the drag radials. So uh, at that time, you know, we we, were, we didn't have none of that stuff. You know, it was more crude. <laughs> You know, so, but we made it work, okay. And uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, inefficiencies at that time. Today, you, you can barely tell nitrous oxide because they don't, they don't really uh, smoke. But back then, the Marvin Miller days, the first uh, NOS, but the NOS was by far the quality was much much better. Everybody else had, you know, used the uh, you know, 10,000 RPM, uh, Marvin Miller, and, uh, and the house of others use a regular carb spacer plate and then they drill it and put the solenoids in there and NOS made their own uh, actually black uh, spacer I think it was coated at that time because uh, Dale Vazanagin of NOS is an aerospace uh, machinist so he had a leg up on the others and that was good that's why you can see the quality of their their kits was much much better Anyway, so that's that's uh, life back in the early days of nitrous oxide. <laughs> okay, not like today. Uh, we people used to laugh. Oh, that's easy stuff. No, guys racing nitrous oxide today. Uh, you'll be impressed. I am impressed. Okay, and uh, I started with it, and what I see Dan and and you know uh, uh, Mike do it with this thing. So I'm impressed. Okay, come again. Coming from an old-time uh, uh, nitrous guy, and uh, I don't take none of these things and say, "Oh, nitrous is easy." Uh -huh. When everybody is on nitrous and everybody else on boost, nothing is easy. All right, even NA. On NA versus, on NA versus, uh, and on NA versus nitrous engines, it is really important that we realize that the tuning perimeter is very, very narrow especially with um, nitrous or boosted or turbo. Uh, you can make a mistake in the timing tables and you could really do big time damage on the engine. Same thing with the air and fuel ratio. Uh, NA is a little bit more forgiving. When you, of course, when you get to the very, very high, RP, uh, high RPM, high compression uh, ratio, sure. But not quite as drastic as you would to do damage on a boosted application or nitrous. Big difference. Hey, please uh, um, 
like, subscribe, and share my videos so I can keep this going, guys. Thank you very much.